Hey everybody, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. How's everybody doing? It is uh, the weekend at the time of this broadcast, and we are continuing our live team coverage, taking you over to the UK as we're celebrating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. And if you saw yesterday, we had an opportunity to take you to London, live on location with all the festivities and the craziness and the excitement and the enthusiasm for this historic and iconic celebration. It's the first time it's happened in all these years to have the Platinum Jubilee for the Queen. In this case, uh, we had a wonderful correspondent, a JMS uh, correspondent, Thomas Mace Archer Mills, founder of the British Monarchist Society, joining us live from London. He's going to join us again. He's got a post-show wrap-up. <laughs> it's kind of like the Super Bowl, isn't it? A post-show wrap-up. Uh, he attended so many of the events it was right there on the scene, and uh, we have lots of video, lots of photos, lots of incredible stories and tales for you. So we are very excited to bring you exclusively here, uh, broadcasting from the United States. That's where this show is uh, broadcast from daily. Uh, this coverage of something very historic and special with our friends over in uh, the United Kingdom, Great Britain. So... Thanks for joining us, everybody. If this is your first time, I'm your host, Jim Masters. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show series that we started about two years ago. It plays off my professional work. I work in television and radio here in the United States and have for a good long time. And we've done about 700 episodes of this series day in and day out with guests coming in from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, stage, music, culinary arts, sports, inspiration, comedy, health and wellness, science and nature, you name it. We do it all here on the show and we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Gym Masters TV. That's where all 700 plus episodes of our series are housed and archived. Subscribe, and that lets us know you're enjoying what we're doing. You become part of the JMS Lovity Squad, which we love. Our viewers uh, tune in and watch from all around the world. We do have an international audience of viewers, and we love them all. If you enjoy this episode and any of the episodes you enjoy, make sure you do give it a hearty thumbs up. That's right. Like, subscribe, comment, all the rest. And again, it's an honor to have all of our viewers watching, they call themselves the Gym Master Show Lovities because we show we say the show has a lot of light love and levity. So uh, that's how we've been doing it. And we're so excited. Now, if you would like to comment while the show is live, you can do that. When you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV right now, you could be a part of the JMS Live chat room. The chat room is open. It's available right now. Folks are already commenting, which we absolutely love. So you can comment right now. We'll see your comments. You can uh, talk amongst yourselves as well, which a lot of our viewers like to do in the JMS exclusive chat room. So when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can participate in the live chat. And don't forget also you can comment later on or at any time, drop a comment underneath this episode. We would absolutely love that. So this is really exciting. I'm going to bring our very special guest, our JMS correspondent coming to us once again, live from uh, London, England. And it's been really quite the uh, epic event. Yesterday, uh, he was on with us and he was surrounded by thousands and thousands of uh, people who were just right there in front of Buckingham Palace. That's where he was, within feet of Buckingham Palace on location. And uh, we got some really good, good stories and coverage from Thomas. And then the Wi-Fi sort of went out a little bit there because, uh, you know, security sort of shuts it down when any of the royals come out of the uh, palace. So they were coming out to do photo ops and different things. And all of the networks and everything had to shut off their Wi-Fi for about an hour and a half. So we did have some good coverage, but we're going to have even more right now for you here again on this JMS exclusive presentation celebrating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee here on the Gym Master Show Live. So let's welcome live and direct our JMS correspondent, Thomas, who's coming to us once again from London and from headquarters. <laughs> Welcome, Thomas. How are you? <laughs> oh, good evening. Well, good afternoon, Jim. Yeah. What a weekend. You know, it, what we say after we've had so much fun and we're absolutely just tired beyond belief, yeah. we say we're cream crackhead. 
which is London East End Cockney slang for knackered, which means very, very tired. <laughs> so I'm sorry, uh, I wasn't able to really dig out my bag of beauty products for the media. <laughs> so <laughs> if there's some bags under these eyes and a little bit of, you know, Prosecco on these cheeks, I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's, you know, a little champagne uh, celebrating the Queen's uh, Platinum Jubilee, that helps as well. And I'm sure there was a lot of champagne flowing throughout London and throughout Great Britain. It was an epic, iconic event, wasn't it? It was. It was. And yesterday when we had gone live, it was so exciting because everybody was just gearing up. They saw the royal cars come. Now, Buckingham Palace is really the office and the meet point rather than a home. And Clarence House, where the Prince of Wales lives, was literally to the left of where I was positioned for all the broadcasting. Well, as soon as he decided he was going to make his way to Buckingham Palace, they couldn't do it by the car because the mall in the back way was all shut down for security. So for security. there was about 20, 25 security guards that escorted the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall from Clarence House right past us right into the palace. So as it's a security concern with WhatsApp and now all of the, the apps that we have, it's easy for people to communicate the location of things. Yes. So what MI5, the security uh, service agency like the FBI in America, they say, right, it's a security concern. We've got not only the heir to the throne, but several of them in one area. Let's shut it down. No internet, nothing. So I apologize to you, Jim. I apologize to the Lovities because it was a party that I wish you all were at. If you wanted love and light and levity, we had a million people there to show thanks and praise for Her Majesty 70 years. And that that picture right there was early on in the day. And you can see the hoop skirts of the ladies that are all union flags and the big union flags that are there. People had face painting. One in particular, her half of her face was a young queen. The other half of her face was an older queen. And as the day went in, see, we put down all of these little picnic area rugs and carpets. And in true British fashion, everyone claims their space and that's it. There's not this sort of pushing and I'm going to stand here. You're taking up too much room. It's true on these events that the early bird gets the worm and the Brits queue. They queue for everything. So where they find space, they set up and then that's it. So uh, imagine a million people in the space on the roadway called the Mall in front of Buckingham Palace. So ah, uh, that was for uh, Princess Cruise Lines. I did some live commentary for them and they were just before our show, Jim. So they had full signal and I was supposed to go back later after our uh, interview and the thing is that the internet wasn't on but also it started raining on the top deck of the ship so did all it? of those oh it did so the sky princess sitting out in in the ocean the sea was literally teeming with thousands of people on the top deck to see me on their big jumbotron reporting live from london yeah. and they had to break it all down because it started raining at sea oh <laughs> I talk about getting wet, right? Oh, no, it is. But we were so hot. It, they didn't call for the sun or that heat. It said overcast, rain coming all day. And we were literally like roasting, uh, roasties on a Sunday afternoon, Jim. That's how hot it was. You could have mm. thrown us into the oven and we would have been potatoes ready for Sunday lunch. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's Buckingham Palace for folks tuning in right now. We welcome everybody yes. watching uh, the Gym Master Show live. Uh, from around the world, we are coming yes. live from uh, the United States and from England right now, from Great Britain. And uh, we're taking a look at some of the actual uh, exclusive photos we have here and video and so much more from the actual Platinum Jubilee. You can still see yesterday's episode where uh, Thomas was on location because we did get some really good commentary and some really good sort of you know, action commentary as things were happening and you were there with the crowds cheering. I mean, it was really, really fantastic. Well, now you were, we're doing... first. Jim, yeah. you were a You beat the BBC in their coverage <laughs> with what we did from the mall yesterday. So you were live streaming to all the loveties around the world, even before the BBC put on any sort of broadcast <laughs> transmission. So we were there. 
That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Take that, BBC. Yeah. <laughs> the kid the, with the Yorkshire roots. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm telling you. And so, the oh, well, that's me holding, of course, the flag of Her Majesty. But I must yeah. have had, if I went through one flag, I went through probably 30 of them yesterday. Oh, yeah. do you have a flag? I do have one. But we were joined by so many of our members. And over the weekend, we were getting brand new memberships of people. Ah, oh, there we are. There's my champagne coop. And, uh, oh, yeah, that just never ran out, Jim. Never ran out. <laughs> I was well hydrated. I mean, look at the size of that glass. That's, uh... <laughs> well, that fits almost a, more than a third of a bottle. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> we did it big for the Jubilee, Jim. <laughs> oh, that was uh, something, huh? Uh, what did they estimate? Uh, what have they estimated? Because for everybody watching right now, the festivities really just ended only about an hour ago. So, yes. you know, this is fresh coverage, fresh information, photos, and we've got video of actual events coming up on this episode of our show. So, you know, people are doing a lot of the post show wrap up and everything, you know, worldwide right now on the networks. But uh, what did they estimate the crowds to be uh, for the Platinum Jubilee? Yes, these were record, absolute record crowds. We thought we had a, a fantastic record back in 2012 for the Diamond Jubilee, but yes. this surpassed anything. They closed the parks earlier than they ever have. And at one point they estimated well over a million people just in front of Buckingham Palace. But that's not including walking to St. James's Park, walking into Green Park, watching yeah. on the Jumbotrons, watching in Hyde Park. So uh, the, the parks are actually considered royal parks and it's at Her Majesty's discretion whether the parks are open or not. People don't realize that. These yeah. are not public parks, they belong to the crown. And uh, it, it's really something to be in this area where you're seeing this picture from because directly to the right is Clarence House and Marlborough mm -hmm. House. So that's where the Prince of Wales lives with Camilla, his wife. But also Marlborough House is the seat of the Commonwealth Secretariat of the 54 nations of which Her Majesty is head. And then by that as well, we have St. James's Palace, which your viewers might like to know is the principal palace of the British monarchy, not Buckingham Palace. Yes. Right. So we are in the middle of royal heaven for all of the royalists and royal watchers. And you are getting a view of what it was like from being inside the festivities with a million other people. But look where we were. Isn't we were at the first, oh, Jim, the first television right behind the barrier where all of the people were ticketed. Now, in 2012, I had tickets for that concert and I gave them away because we mm -hmm. weren't allowed to bring drinks. <clears throat> Excuse uh, me. Yeah. We weren't allowed to bring food or anything. So plus you couldn't actually take your seat until just a few hours before showtime. Whereas on the Mall, you can go in the morning, bring your coolers, bring your koozies, bring your chairs, bring everything from your picnic that you want and literally camp there all day. Meet your friends, have a party. And then the big party starts later in the evening. Mm, that's fantastic. That's you don't really... get a oh, you don't get a better view than this, Jim. That's Not that's enough. uh yeah. I mean that's like being you know that's like using a jib camera type thing. <laughs> and that that's just my mobile phone. Those ladies right there, they're from the northeast. They came all the way down, hours and hours on the train for this. And really? actually, we were strangers when we first got to the mall, but we're the best of friends when we uh, left. Is that that's... incredible? This is the power of the queen and unifying the people of this country, Jim. Politics, race, creed, sex, everything aside, under the queen, we're British. And people from all walks of life, all across this great country, people were there to actually live out what Her Majesty is about. And that's it, unity, celebration. So when they went home, it was actually really sad because we we were saying goodbye to great new friends that I hope we're going to see quite a bit in the future. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, for folks who are tuning in who said, you know, I've been busy and I've been hearing about this Platinum Jubilee thing happening overseas in England. Um, tell everybody the importance of it. And once again, what it really is about. Some people say, well, what, what is the Platinum Jubilee? It sounds exciting, but, but what is it? It's, it's beyond exciting. There's no precedent for this, Jim. And when you say that, that 
the British don't have a precedent for something, you better take Mark and be like, well, there's a precedent for everything. Because if the British do it, they've done it before and they've done it great. Everyone loves a British parade. Yeah. But this is a celebration of seven decades of service by one monarch. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Northern Ireland and the United Kingdom and all the realms and dominions of abroad, it's absolutely something. 63 years her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, reigned, and that was the longest ever in British history. So now the Queen is not only the longest-lived sovereign, has broken every British royal milestone, she has now brought us into uncharted, unprecedented territory with a platinum jubilee. In two more years, she will surpass Louis XIV, Louis XIV of France, in being the longest living monarch ever in world history. Wow. So when we say, long may she reign, God save the queen, we really mean it because of course, we want to be the French. <laughs> 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 that's funny <laughs> look at this shot here where it's all lit up i know they did all kinds of uh visuals actually streaming across the oh, face no. of buckingham palace which was really cool i saw some of that. let me tell you about this jim i'm just gonna be down with the kids right now and say hashtag omg because <laughs> when we saw like these little dots going like this, coming up from behind the palace, it reminded me of Star Wars. You know, when they go into light speed and all of a sudden you get these strobes. They deployed drones with all lights in them. All of this is drone animatronics flying all over. So I I'm sure you've got some other of these lovely shots, yes. but this... It, it spun around the 70, the crown. It was fully animated. We didn't have fireworks last night. Some people were a, a little disappointed. But how could you be with this technology, seeing this in the sky, literally hundreds of feet tall and wide? There they are. There's the Queen's Guards. Absolutely no, brilliant. How in the world did they come up with the technology and the programming to use drones to create this and to fly up undetected? Well, the famous handbag of Her Majesty. She doesn't go anywhere without it. And uh, so these if visuals that were happening over and above Buckingham Palace. Yes. Wow. Yes. How and, rare is that, too? You never uh, get we, anything going over Buckingham Palace. Well, we've never seen anything like this, Jim. And no. you could hear a pin drop. When you looked at people, they were literally clutching their pearls in excitement. Oh, you know, this is what we've never seen it. And it was 2012. Well, actually, 2002, when the palace, Her Majesty actually gave the first ever permission for the palace to be lit up as we've seen the last three Jubilees. But mm -hmm. to have something like this, this was very special. This is something that we will have only have seen. It was a surprise. I was there on the eve of the 2nd of, of June to see some of the, uh, not configurations, but just testing the lights and the flashing. Now here... This is the postage stamp that graces every single letter, first class or second class, in this country. So wow. if you at home receive a letter with stamps, you will see the Queen's image right here. So, and you have her royal cipher, E, R, and the Roman numeral 2 on the palace. Now that stands for Elisabetta Regina II, which is Latin for Queen Elizabeth II. Yes. I mean, the symbolism on the palace, Jim, you didn't have to be a royalist to appreciate this. There were people from Italy. They don't have a monarchy. Uh, there were people from Sweden. And I know one of our watchers who is very loyal to the show. She's here all the time. She has a monarchy. And so she'll understand because next year is the Golden Jubilee, 50 years of their king. So I'm sure they're going to see fantastic things. But to join such an exclusive club as Her Majesty at 70 years... It's unfathomable to think that someone has given their life and dedicated service in duty, selfless duty, mm -hmm. not only to one country, but 15 of which she is queen and head of state and 54 more, which make up the Commonwealth. Really we, incredible. Oh, she has touched everyone on this planet. We had Americans with us, Jim. I, I myself was born in America. So I say America is my country of birth. The United Kingdom is my home. And of course, my mother's family are all British, British Northern Irish as well. So just to be with Republicans in the sense that they come from countries without a monarchy, not the political sense, in other continental monarchies to celebrate the Queen 
it shows the power of the influence of Her Majesty. And if we think about it, we have all these social influencers, Jim. Look at me, selfie, hashtag, blah, blah, blah. Yes. No, no, no. Her Majesty is the original influencer, the mm -hmm. original. And that's the way it is. I beg yeah. anyone to argue with me on that. <laughs> There's Prince Charles. Uh, so they came out and various people made uh, speeches and tributes too during the course of the uh, oh, entire Jubilee. Yes. Right? I mean, the, he is known, the first ever Jubilee back in, well, it wasn't the first ever, but the one in modern where we are that we can remember of the one, actually I was born was 2002. It's the golden, I wasn't born in 2002. It's the first Jubilee I was able to witness since my birth was 2002, the golden Jubilee. And he stood on that stage and he said, your majesty, mummy. And the crowd went wild because he never calls his mother mummy in public ever. And it endeared him then, but then he did it again 10 years ago in 2012. So people were yelling, say it, say it, say yeah. it. And sure enough, your majesty, mummy, <laughs> it was rapturous applause, rapturous. And it just shows the human aspect of the heir to the throne. And he actually rolled with the punches. Yes. You know, I think Americans have a very different view of the Prince of Wales and what people here do. He's very much light. Uh, we've taken him to our hearts, so very well respected. So he actually said, well, Her Majesty couldn't be with us tonight. She's at Windsor watching this on television. And Windsor is but not even 20 miles away. So if we all cheer loud enough for her, she might be able, and that was it. They didn't let His Royal Highness finish his speech. All of a sudden, hooray, hooray, yeah, yeah, they were just yelling at the already. top of their lungs. And <laughs> there was no stop in the crowd. So he gave a wave and a bow and the smile on his face wow. was, uh, it was magic, Jim. We've never seen, even, even 2002 and 2012, we've not seen anything like this. That's absolutely amazing. And again, you know, we need more positivity in the world. We need more positive events and celebrations. I remember the big 100th birthday epic celebrations in the United States for the Statue of Liberty, of oh. course, which was a gift to America from France. But what happened on that Liberty weekend was extraordinary. The coverage, the events, the, the ships and the fireworks and all the special things that they did. And you don't see a lot of those joyous celebrations happening anywhere, unless it's a no. sporting event maybe or something, but you know, in a usual typical entertainment concert event, but like where a nation or a people do an epic celebration of something we haven't seen that in, in many years. So right. celebrations like this bring people together in a very positive way and get them to forget about the chaos and negativity and yes. craziness of life, you know? Well, this was a COVID party. We're, we're done with COVID now. We've spent two, all the better part of two, two and a half years being cooped yeah. up, not seeing family, not seeing yeah. friends. The lockdown was more stringent uh, here than it was in the United States. And this was a chance for us to say, you know what? There is no better reason to gather like this. And uh, it, it really was. It was special for that, of course. But in countries like republics such as the United States, Jim, what we need to remember is that every year there's a day that the United States celebrates, which is the, the well, <laughs> I'm forgetting my American history. Oh, my gosh, too much Prosecco. <laughs> it's 1776. Yes. And the Declaration of Independence and all of that. So everyone knows the 4th of July is the day that everyone's going to come out and party and have fireworks and the president and the vice president do their thing. And then you say either, I love my president or I didn't vote for him and blah, blah, blah. And the partisan sort of ridiculousness takes hold and Gets then it the turns way. into a political thing and it tears people apart. Whereas in this country, there isn't really one day where people come together for a political reason. Mm -hmm. They're coming together for Her Majesty's birthday parade every year, which is the second Saturday of june and it was moved forward this year so we could have an extra two days off for a bank holiday <laughs> <laughs> so it's good thinking oh it was great <laughs> but uh, if we didn't have trooping the color it would only be special days that the united kingdom has triumphed such as ve day celebrations for big 50 70 75 uh 100 years for the first world war yeah. so 
unlike the United States, there's not a lot of regular falling days that this country has to celebrate that are not attached to royalty or Her Majesty or whatever sovereign will be on the throne in the future. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a good thing to point those things out and to remember that. Here's another great shot. <laughs> yes. We, okay. I'm going to tell you, this was this morning. I was running late, uh, which is not like me, but it was a late <laughs> night, Jim. It was so yes. Late. So, of course, I was still parched and I said, right, I'm going to turn down here and use a cut through. And I saw this picture and there were still people out in the garden having drinks this morning. And I said, right, I'm going to get myself a pint and grab a water to go. <laughs> so this is what the decorations are down almost every alleyway in every street around London and in, in the shires, in the towns, in other cities. Everyone has bunting. They've run out of bunting. There's almost a national bunting shortage. I feel like I was back in the pandemic and we couldn't get loo roll. <laughs> Where's the bunting? <laughs> Where's the bunting? So, oh, yeah, it, it's just the queen everywhere. So I was in my element, Jim. <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. A lot of great, and there's uh, Buckingham Palace all decked out, all the beautiful mm. colors, but also um, some major talent was on hand performing as well. Yes. Rod Stewart and a lot of cool people, huh? Yeah, oh, well, yes. And if you see in this picture to the left, you've got one of the Warhol prints of Her Majesty. Now this song was Girls on Film by Duran Duran. And yes. all of a sudden, after this snap was taken, then all sorts of filmography, still photos, were projected on the palace from all the decades of which Her Majesty has been caught on film. And then it went to broadcasting film, moving pictures and all of that. So mm -hmm. the song was symbolic and representative and Her Majesty just literally lit up Buckingham Palace with her face throughout the decades, which was fantastic. When yeah. we say about the talent, Jim, you know, people either loved or hated this lineup and there's been a lot of controversy today the reviews have come out um there's a lot of things that i think could have been done better um we gather and the bbc said they put out we want artists that are well known with songs to engage the people but you're having artists sing songs that aren't their own if i wanted to hear sweet caroline i would like neil, neil diamond. diamond to be there and if yeah. you're going to bring someone like Diana Ross, okay, she's American entertainment royalty, but just because she is popular with Prince Charles and the Queen, she failed to deliver yesterday. Can you believe I'm saying that about the Diana Ross? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it, people, it, people were not happy. And we wanted Maggie May. There, there's, we wanted other songs. Oh, there we go. That's Girls on, on Film again there. Just fantastic, wow. that one. That yeah. shot, see the queen throughout the decades on the palace. So that's what uh, that, yeah, yeah, explain what we're seeing here for those watching. That's yeah. very cool what they did there. That's oh, again yes. for folks watching, that's Buckingham Palace. And these are the beautiful, visual, colorful displays that they yes. did superimposing these images on the front fascia of Buckingham Palace. Oh, we start on the left and we've got a young queen it, it, with the, the tiara and all of that. Then we're going right now into, I would say, uh, the 70s, early 80s with the green. And again, 60s and the yellow. Uh, I, I can't really make out that picture to the right of the queen and her yellow uh, headpiece there. But, uh, oh, yes. I, and it, they just kept rotating, Jim. We mm. were treated to so many photos of Her Majesty through the decades. Uh, I, I could, don't even have a favorite. They were really all my amazing. favorite. <laughs> yes. Ah, George imagine. Ezra. You all know George. George Ezra. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, there's a story with this, Jim. And you know I call myself a realist royalist. And I said, yes. you know, a lot Double of R. people. <laughs> yes. Yes. A lot of people don't realize that this will be the last time we come together as a nation for Her Majesty while she's alive. Mm. The next time we all come together will unfortunately be to pay our respects. That is the truth of the situation. Yeah. There will not be another Jubilee unless she lives another five years for 75th Jubilee. God willing, yeah. I hope she makes it. Yes. But one of the songs that he sang, there was a lyric about dying in death, and he removed it from the song for this Jubilee performance, which I think oh, was that's very, very good. Yeah. Yes. yes, because it's to be celebrating life Yes. And it's not to get people upset. People were emotional and upset on their own when we saw the nostalgia kicking in. 
Yeah. And if we saw the beginning, I don't want to ruin it too much, but Her Majesty had tea with Paddington Bear. Yeah. And when he removed his hat and did his thank you speech to her, everyone, again, yeah. pin drop. The gentleman to my left turned to me, red puffy eyes. You could see him streaming. The ladies behind. I, it, was, it was a tearjerker because it brought us back to 2012 when she was opposite uh, James Bond. Yes. And these, these sorts of little sketches are kept not just from the general public, but her own family. So it's a surprise. Oh, oh, Andrea Bocelli. This mm. can I tell you? Mm. Not a dry eye. No. And Nessa Dorma no. yeah. reminds me of my grandmother, who I lost back in February. And I, this is touching me as well because of Her Majesty the Queen and, and all of that. So everybody was just the rapturous of, and I've said rapturous before. There's not a better word for this. He wasn't even finished, Jim. No. wasn't even finished. Uh, it was going to the bridge and it was elongated and the crowd. Oh my gosh. And he knew it. He was trying to be so composed and mm -hmm. this little smile started in the corner of his mouth and he was trying to contain it, but you couldn't when you've got that many people screaming yeah. your name and no. cheering for yes. you. He stole the show. Absolutely stole the show. We have Andre a tiny Bocelli. little, clip too from the actual uh, live events of Bocelli there doing ah. this thing just about a minute here let's take a look at that folks if you're just joining us I'm Jim Masters your host you're watching the Jim Masters show live entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series coming to you from the United States broadcasting worldwide our very special guest good friend of our show JMS correspondent and founder of the British Monarchist Society Thomas face archer mills he returns to our show uh as we are bringing to you this incredible coverage two days of coverage of queen elizabeth's incredible platinum jubilee now here's a little andre bocelli <laughs> Absolutely incredible, huh? They, I would imagine everybody was, like you say, they were mesmerized. They were taken back um, to have Andrea there. I, I had an opportunity to work on a PBS Great Performances special, his uh, Live from Portofino special. Yes. And, and he was just absolutely epic. And uh, yeah, I, you know, what a good variety of people too, as far as the the talent, you know, that they brought in. I think that that's, that's terrific. You know, I guess they, you know, brought something for all ages and backgrounds and uh, to appeal to a wide variety of generations too, because you're talking yeah. 70 years. So that spans a lot of life and a lot of generations, right? That she well, has touched over the years. Yes. And I was hoping for that. I wanted a showcase lineup to be any concert you've ever seen, Jim. If we could have got some great things from all of those decades. I mean, imagine what that would have been if we would have gone back Sir Cliff from the 50s, you know, bring back uh, some of, of the living Beatles that we had for the 60s. Look yes. at the 70s, the, the Cultural Revolution. I mean, when we look at the 60s and the British invasion, I mean, come on. We've got so many fantastic ones. You know, and would have been uh, Shirley Bassey, too. She would have, and Dame I don't know why. Yeah. Um, there were so many people. We were scratching our heads and saying, right, I, 
I know that they want to bring these people, and I'm not impugning an artist at all, because Lord knows I can't carry a note, Jim. <laughs> not a note. But when you're... you can sing happy birthday when you have to, right? Uh, with enough Prosecco. <laughs> prosecco first, <laughs> That's then right. happy birthday from Tom. Exactly. Sounds better if you've all had Prosecco first. <laughs> that so, is funny. Well, what we had was was great talent. Yes, I'm not impugning that, but it, it was a little disjointed. And a lot of the rapping, of course, uh, it was great. They made their verses and the words about Her Majesty the Queen and what it is to be British. We get that. But I think that there could have been a lot more diversity in that lineup. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. It's really amazing. You know, imagine how long, how long did it take to put this all together? This was something, huh? Mm. Oh, this, this has been in the works a year, well over a year, the planning for this, just for that concert. Uh, I, I would beg to say they've had this on probably for well over two years to be able to have this the way that we had wanted it. It was being billeted a year into COVID as the party of all parties. Yeah. It's the release from COVID. So uh, the government several years ago had appropriated the funds for this, for these celebrations. So the planning went right into full gear. So it's, I'm sure it's years in the making. Yes. The um, and, and for folks watching, too, we've had you on a guest as a guest for our two year anniversary celebration yes. just about two weeks ago. And then you were on also and Olga Thomas was on. And you guys had been involved in this fantastic official, you know, anthem for the Platinum Jubilee. Tell us about that again for everybody. Well, that was a year and a half in the making itself. And today at the pageant, which was the end finale of all of this, Leslie Garrett, who is national treasure, uh, she was on the 1950s bus because that's when she was born. But she was given the CBE by Her Majesty, which is a command of the British Empire, the highest you can get. So with that being said, Leslie features on our anthem that we wrote, National Treasure. She had her own BBC show, everything. So a few days ago on Thursday, the 2nd of June in the morning, Lord's Cricket Ground hosted the international premiere of our song, which went out to tens of millions around the world for England versus New Zealand cricket on Sky Sport, wow. which was fantastic. And then for Leslie to be on that bus today representing, uh, we, we debuted number one on the iTunes charts, number one and number two, because there's two tracks that make up one album, Jim. Right. And uh, I, I, I am so honored to be able to work with my friends and artists such as Dr. Thomas and, and Leslie Garrett and Rodney Earl Clark and the London Community Gospel Choir and my good, good friend, colleague, and he's an officer of society, Anton Vandermeer, who is a famous opera singer. He's coming uh, on our show too in a couple of weeks. Oh, yes. I didn't want to give it away, but yes, yeah, he's well, so we'll excited. Please, everybody. Yeah, let's see. And, Anton's well, coming up. So for those who aren't familiar with Anton, tell us about Anton. So then they'll be looking for that episode of our show. Well, Anton is South African born, lives here with his partner in Essex. And if it wasn't for COVID, I wouldn't have been able to ask him to help me with, with the anthem. But he has been for decades opera. He sang for the Queen on one of her first visits to see President Nelson Mandela. Uh, he's performed for her, for the South African president. He was so well known that the cruise ships reached out to him and said, we would love to have you. Normally, it's the other way around. Right. And, uh, yeah. So we have talent all over, literally spanning the decades. And Anton will be able to give insight, really, as to what it is about the unifying aspect of Her Majesty in the Commonwealth from a country that saw terrible racism, that saw yeah. apartheid. And to see this apolitical figure come to this country when, when South Africa was a Commonwealth nation. And at that time, it was very turbulent because Margaret Thatcher, rest her, um, she got into a little squabble with the Queen and said, I know your life's passion and your work is the Commonwealth. You have built it but we need to suspend South Africa, apartheid. And the queen said, there's got to be a better way. We have to work with countries, not, not scold them. We have to teach the way, not punish them. Yeah. And, uh, and that's so 
important when we talk about love and levity and light and we look at a country that has been through the thick of it. If we think the United States and the history and recently with Black Lives Matter and the atrocities uh, going back all the way from the early days, colonial days, Jim, South Africa, when they were taking the land and murdering people because of your color and this sort of thing, Anton lived through this. He was a young, impressionable boy. And to make it to where he has from a country that when it changed from white to black to aggression to murder, his story is truly something. And he reveres Her Majesty for her ability to unify people, even though she's not the head of state. South Africa is a republic. Right, exactly. Really fascinating. Yeah, it's going to be amazing to have him on the show. And uh, in a few weeks, we'll we'll post and promote uh, that when he's coming on. So we're looking forward to that. Um, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're part of our Lovety squad now. Yeah, that's right. Well, they've all made me so welcome, Jim. And it has been an honor to come back for your show, but also for yesterday. And then to be able, when I saw that I was a, a JMS correspondent, yes. I literally was like, oh my gosh, Jim Masters is literally asking me to do this and bring the Jubilee around the world again. And we do it in a way that the BBC can't. In America, it was on ABC, if I'm not mistaken, Channel yeah. 10 in some of the big markets. Yeah. But you don't get that feel. When you're in the thick, well, I was probably in the first 25,000 people out of a million you don't get that surround sound anywhere from the BBC or ABC that you do on the mall. You want to talk about stereo? I, I think I almost went deaf a few times. <laughs> <laughs> there is Sir Rod Stewart. Yes. There's, they must have yes. went wild when Rod Stewart started to do his well, thing, huh? They did. And then everyone kind of looked at each other, confused, and said, well, wait a minute. You're singing Sweet Caroline and not a very good rendition. And the papers have absolutely slaughtered him and chastised him today for his rendition. But we need to think this man is a sir. He's been knighted by her majesty. We do have to show some respect. But when people are expecting the best of the best and they don't get it, everyone's a critic, Jim. Yes, Everyone sure. now has an opinion and they want to make right. it heard. So uh, he's still a legend. The songs that he sang were were okay. I would have liked to see more of his own super hits because everyone knows, come on, wake up, Maggie, I think I got some. I mean, that gets mm -hmm. people up. And then there was a woman, one of my good friends I met on a cruise ship back in the Caribbean this winter. Her name is Maggie, and she came all the way from Leicester with her husband. And she goes, yes, yes, Maggie, Maggie. And I was like, okay, it's, it's going to be Maggie. And you should have seen the disappointment. She goes, well, if you don't want to sing about me on the Queen's Jubilee, we're done, mate. We're through. <laughs> that is funny. We have another uh, video clip here we're going to show. We'll surprise everybody with it, and then we'll come back and we will uh, we'll talk about it. Here it is. Oh, great. More great coverage from Queen Elizabeth's historic Platinum Jubilee this weekend. <laughs> Really cool, huh? So tell yeah. us about what we're seeing there for folks uh, watching around the well, world. I took these little snippets because I was really just wanting to see it in my, my own eyes. And I spend so much of my time, Jim, behind the camera looking at prompters, looking at screens to see what I should be commenting on rather than seeing it in real life. Yes. So I was like, right. I'm going to make a, a promise to myself, nothing more than 45 minutes to an hour and 10 minutes. I mean, a minute and 15 seconds, 45 seconds to a minute and 15 seconds. Nothing more than that, because I want to experience this. But that was Duran Duran. Yeah. And one thing I want people to note, and if you, they need to rewind and go back to see it again, notice the chatter. People weren't so much into it. They were talking to each other. Less cameras. You didn't see as many cameras up because it wasn't captivating the people. They were expecting to have what the BBC billeted as the hit, the party of the lifetime. And when they lost interest, 
they were talking amongst themselves. The best time for a refill were on the songs that people really too, weren't too wild about. So you'll hear the popping corks and, do you want something from the cooler? Do you want this? Do you want that? You know, <laughs> Pam saying, I saw him in 1971. You know, I was seeing him. I saw him back in the 90s and 2000s. My mother loved him. I sent her that clip. Um, I, I, I think maybe we've sent it, my production team sent it to you. If we don't have him, um, I will tell you, I was so excited for my mum. I said, mummy, uh, you know, Rod Stewart's performing. I took this little video. Sorry, it's not going to be longer. You should be here and you're not. Not my problem. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> so she came back to me and she goes, now you know I love me some Rod. And I've mm. always said, yes, I do think your body's sexy. And especially after she divorced my father, she's like, I wish Rod Stewart would come and sing to me. I'm like, you're dirty. I can't talk to you anymore. That's uh... <laughs> <laughs> You don't say that to your firstborn son. <laughs> <laughs> we have another video so, here we're going to uh, sprinkle into the mix. Let's take a look at this. This is uh, another piece of video from the actual events in front of Buckingham Palace, gang. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Jim Masters here in the United States. Thomas Mace Archer Mills, our JMS correspondent, right there live in London, also founder of the British Monarchist Society, which we uh, talked about at great length on our episode. If you didn't see when he was a, a full guest on the show, uh, check that out. That's in the archives, along with about 700 other episodes of our mm -hmm. series, which is amazing. Here's some over more. two years. Over two, two years, Jim. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. It's, I can't believe we've done 700 episodes. It takes TV series sometimes 10 years to do 500 episodes. Okay. Uh, we've been delivering the content and loving it. <laughs> we, need a J, we need a JMS Jubilee. That's what we need to have. When we get to 1,000. <laughs> we've got to do a JMS yeah. ju right, Jubilee. <laughs> oh, this Jubilee has been 1,000 years in the making. 1,000 yeah. years for this one. So when you get to 1,000 episodes, Jim, that's it. We're hosting a Jubilee. So what is it, a Jimmy Jubilee? <laughs> the Viscount James, James, James Monsters Jubilee. <laughs> yes, I remember getting the uh, mail that would say Master James Masters. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just call you Master Squared. <laughs> yes, of the fifth too. Oh, there cool. you go. So we'll call you Double M5 Squared. <laughs> Double M5 Squared, that's right. <laughs> Ro roll that, Jim. Let's see what you have in store. Instead of Bond, it's Masters, James oh, Masters. Oh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna write this down while you're, you're that playing down. that. Yes. Let's just watch the episode again. Binge watch. Like you I do. You binge watch thing. all the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I do like them. Yeah. That's a, I know you do. We appreciate that. Spread the word to uh, the rest of the UK. <laughs> oh, we are. We are. All right. Here's uh, more of the great coverage from the Platinum Jubilee Gang. Wow. Just a little teaser there, which is great. What was going on there? The drones were getting ready to actually make these fantastic images in the sky. I, they had just all of a sudden when they lifted up off the back garden from the palace, you could see them rise and then come forward and then twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. And I was like, whoa, media shower, take cover. <laughs> They're coming at us. And they did. They flew right over the top of the palace and everyone was like, oh, what's going on? We thought they were those delayed fireworks when they go up and they sort of kind of just uh, and fall away. Yeah. And they didn't. And they turned into some of the most iconic things that Her Majesty loves. Wow. It That's was amazing. Yeah. And that song there, People, that's a dance song. I mean, people were really enjoying that. And people wanted something to dance to, Jim. They yeah, no, really no. wanted that. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was a bit disjointed. I'll be very honest with you. I'll tell you why. Because once we sing the national anthem, that's the ending of all shows. And then the MC comes on and thanks everyone. And thank you for joining in. It's been a pleasure to have you here for Her Majesty the Queens. Da, 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 da. You know what, Jim? They should have hired me for that. I'm doing it right now because they <laughs> didn't. <laughs> so it was disjointed because we had the Prince of Wales speak. Of course, his son, the Duke of Cambridge, as you know him, Prince William in America, he's, he had a speech before that. And then the heir to the throne representing his mother giving the, the a loyal address, if you will. And then God Save the Queen had come on. Everyone was singing their hearts out. Literally, some people didn't even know the words, but I, I can really excuse them because they weren't British. So they were just <laughs> singing whatever, and it just whatever worked. Whatever they could yeah, throw in. in. They loved it. 
And then we were all like, okay, great. And then two minutes, literally two minutes over the, the loudspeakers, well, we have a wonderful finale lined up for you. We're like, well, the Prince of Wales is surely the finale because you've already sang the national anthem. Did you forget that Diana Ross is there? And then people were speculating, is she late? You can't be late. Have you had to restructure the concert? Because you never put anyone after God Save the Queen. That's it. That is, that is the national anthem. Yeah. So it was, it was very confusing to people. So then Diana Ross came out. She didn't really know where to go. She wasn't directed. And she stayed up on the backstage. Mm. So everyone in the front couldn't see her. She never came around onto the front stage. So people were like, well, where is she? So we had to watch her on the Jumbotron. And then she sang three songs. She ended with Ain't No Mountain High Enough, a slower rendition. And then she got lost again and said, well, I'm going to have my son uh, direct me. Thank you. And she said his name and thanked him. And then literally it was as, as if the house lights came on and the board said, transmission of the broadcast has ended. Be safe. Peace out. <laughs> like we were all Peace like, out. What, what are you talking about? Like what you just, not even a thank you from an MC, nothing done. Right. Off you go. Thanks for coming and take your bottles and rubbish with you. Not even that. It was, we're done. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> were there fireworks? Were there fireworks? fireworks? No, there fire fire no fireworks. No. Yeah. And yeah. you've already set a precedent for Jubilees before. And even people were saying, right, now that Diana Ross is done, we should have the smoke and the streaming fireworks and then the small fireworks. And it failed to deliver. We, we like fireworks. Okay, the drones were fantastic te technology. We were nice. really yeah. treated to that. But yeah. that was even well before the finale. That sort of stuff, was, yeah, it was very disjointed, Jim. It was an enjoyable experience. Don't get me wrong. It, yeah. I wouldn't it's have... It's in a lifetime it. situation, right? It was. But for people who were really excited, they should have pulled all the stops. When you're designating 45 million pounds for a four-day party and you can't give us some fireworks, look at that. Look at that. Though That's made out of drones. Now, here in the United Kingdom, we refer to Her Majesty once if we're talking about her anything. So if we were to meet her, we'd say, Your Majesty, with the yeah. greeting. And then every time thereafter, we would meet her during that event or later on. It's always just once, Your Majesty, and then Mom. And then Mom. Mom. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, that, that's the way it was done in the lit up drones because the whole stage was always your majesty, your majesty. So everybody was really just, they have to say your majesty because it's their first time addressing her during the night. But they figured because we've already heard your majesty, your majesty, we'll just put thank you bum up there which I yeah. thought was endearing, a little informal, because we all now think of her as the granny of the nation. Yeah. And when she has these cute little looks on her face, and it's so endearing. And to do these little expressions, such as in that sketch, oh, I'll come back to this. This is Alicia Keys that you're seeing here. Uh, yeah, this was right. during New York, that song. And they had the palace gym dripping in gold. Mm. And then towards the end of the finale of that song, it was as if the huge smelting pots had been pushed over the top of the palace and it just rained gold in huge splashes and Isn't swaths. That beautiful. And, oh, I've so never seen the production seen value as far as some of those, you know, uh, visuals were really stunning, huh? Oh, uh, Jim, there's yeah. not a word in the Oxford Dictionary that could actually paint the picture of stunning of magnificent of hashtag omg this was this was you, we've never seen anything like it i've never seen the palace glitter all remember anything that glitters and all is gold something to that effect and that's what this was this was buckingham palace shimmering in gold it, it was i i can't jim I, i'm yeah. it takes yeah. my breath away yes it's really beautiful uh they did something similar in the United States when it was the another 100th birthday of the Brooklyn Bridge in mm. New York City. And they had the fireworks and all, but they had sort of the 
spewing out of the what looks like gold off the side of the entire length of the Brooklyn Bridge mm. going into the river, uh, just like a waterfall coming off the bridge into the river. You probably see it if you uh, Google it or YouTube it. Uh, mm -hmm. Really breathtaking. It's amazing what they can do now with some of that, with the, those pyrotechnics and things of that nature. Yes. And of course, the visual, you know, mm -hmm. the digital HD creations are extraordinary, huh? You have to give these production teams the most, the utmost in kudos for what they've done, because it is, I, I can't even imagine the talent the BBC had to source to create this production and the laser lights, the montages, the projections, uh, even down to the drones, Jim. This was the most up-to-date latest technology that I'm sure any production company has known to man at yeah, this point really beautiful again mm -hmm. looking at some of these uh once again just to see uh yeah you know it's like with all the craziness going on in the world to have had an opportunity to experience something like this now for you being there on location uh for really the whole thing the several yeah. days of this what was it like for you i'm sure it was uh, an apex you know you're very involved with uh british society there with the mm -hmm. uh, monarchist society so you're you've got yourself immersed in the culture for you yes. this must have been and then involved with that musical anthem just it must have been very emotional and very breathtaking for you as well yes i'm glad you said emotional because in fine british ways they have their, their times to be emotional. And when you're in public, it's always stiff upper lip. Yes. But when you looked around last night, it was almost as if the rules could be suspended for this. Yeah, that like so the ties much, are loosened a little bit. Exactly. It, emotion was just running rampant. It was as if it was just running and pushing everyone and biting everyone. And then, oh, uh, it was horrible. Because yeah. <laughs> no one had a dry eye in the house several times uh, throughout the evening. But Trooping the Color, uh, Her Majesty's Birthday Parade on Thursday. Uh, so that was an all-day event. And then we had uh, some, some events after that. Then I was a keynote speaker that evening. And then I went live to the East Coast for another network. Uh, I think I went to bed at maybe 3, 4 in the morning, mm -hmm. Thursday night. Then on Friday, we hosted a live stream of the service of Thanksgiving, followed by a luncheon, a tea, and a royal recital by none other than Dr. Olga Thomas, the Queen's private composer and composer to the royal family that you've had on the show before. Yeah, gang, if you didn't see yeah. that episode, uh, the Queen's private composer, <laughs> Olga mm -hmm. Thomas, extraordinary episode, yes. very open and warm person. Uh, she was a guest on the show as well. Check that episode out, yes. gang. She played, well, she was supposed to perform three of her top hits, but she played, she performed four. I'm sorry, artists don't play, they perform. Yeah, <laughs> so she performed right. a fantastic royal lullaby, which one of her, uh, the, the woman's voice, I, I can't even tell you, from Covent Garden was absolutely it gave you goose flesh jim yes, yes. So we were, she even surprised me with that and i am the one who outlined the whole day so then after that uh it was straight from that function to uh a few different networks gb news uh, which is similar to fox news in america but the british version so i uh, went up to see my friends there and talk about the jubilee and i think by the time i got home i think the car dropped me to 2 30 and, and then we job. had to do it all <laughs> now i had to do emails had to catch up with my publicist i had to make sure that interviews for the next day were okay because that was saturday which was when i uh worked with princess cruise lines you jim uh, other networks as well then the concert that night and then i went to the west coast which is eight hours behind 
Yes, so it, yeah. it was a late night last night by the time I got home. I saw I went down as the sun came up. I think there's mm. a Garth Garth Brooks song, Ain't Going Down to the Sun Comes Up. Yeah. That, uh, That's right. If you don't know that song, it's great. And then uh, I was up and at it, albeit an hour and 10 minutes late this morning, Jim, and I'm back here with you. So uh, I'd like to say it was enjoyable, but it was a lot of work. And you have to understand that three days before, so starting on Monday, I was all over the world with Swiss News, um, Sky Arabia, um, just so many different networks. So my Jubilee coverage actually started on Monday, and yeah, here we are on Sunday. So I'm, I'm ready to drop. On the uh, <laughs> the Jim Masters show live in the United States. Kind of epic, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. And especially beating the BBC. There's my friends again. You have never seen two ladies. They just came by themselves. And when we sat down... We were just in a very British fashion, Jim. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, would were there you people mind? from other countries too? I would imagine oh, yes. people came from around the world or other parts around of Around the world, yes. Yeah. But there were so many British people that descended. Yes. And that when and they were and you can tell they're British because the ladies brought their little blankets and that and they just looked at us before even claiming a spot and, and copping a squat as we call it. They said, Would you mind terribly if if we uh, joined you and, and took this little area. And I said, you can take as much as you like, love. Actually, if you're here on your own, join us. The more the merrier. This is the party a thousand years in the making. Let's, we're going to be friends That's after it. this. Yeah. And so, it reminded me of you and your yeah. show and everyone that has accepted me here, Jim. And I was so honored to bring that to all the lovities around the world. So in Great Britain, they say copper squat. <laughs> well, a lot of people, it depends on where you're here. From. They say Papa squat. <laughs> yeah, no, copper squat. Well, we're not copping a field, but we're just copper squat. squat. Um, yeah, yeah, but it, yeah, it comes really Squatting from and sitting, and yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's really like well, you're going to laugh at this because so many people love Julia Roberts and they love that film where she's like, I think she said something like copper squat and lay like broccoli or something like that. Uh, anyone here can can correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a lot of movies that people use here, a lot of films that. Uh, it has made their way, the, the lines into Britishisms and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. you know, most people, they say, oh, yes, do you mind if, if we happen to uh, lie our, our you know, picnic blankets? Do you mind if we join? We'll be neighbors, that sort of thing. That's right. And then we had another couple, British, and they said, oh, well, we'll take this side, neighbors. And just so you know, we're going to be very British. And once we claim our territory, we're not going to leave for the day. <laughs> <laughs> and they we're were lovely. Stay there. <laughs> and, and they did. And then when it came time to open one barrier, because they needed some more people to fill in mm -hmm. um, to the standing room only, we all just stood there and we were like, we're not moving. Because if you ask us to go forward to fill yeah. in for the cameras, we're actually in front of the television where we can't see it. Whereas right now we are in front of the palace, but behind the television where they where we can view. So if we would have gone further up, past the television we wouldn't have seen or had the view that we've had here jim so yeah. that's why we all sort of revolted and said we've planted our flag here's where we will remain well they can't go against a million people can they <laughs> <laughs> not exactly here's another great shot uh what are we seeing here my friend that is george ezra and everyone loves george ezra yeah. uh, and again this little union flag uh, definitely made its appearance in some of my screenshots, but she was young. Uh, well, not young. She was younger, an Italian girl, and uh, she had an awfully long flag, tall flag. Yeah. So every now and again, it would make an appearance, but uh, I didn't mind because as you can see from my view, uh, I'm not actually really tall, Jim, but I'm tall enough to hold the phone up to be a above everyone's head. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> head and shoulders above. <laughs> that's right. Yes, that's, that's right. Funny. And of course, there's Rod Stewart again. So and Rod. There's, there's another great uh, shot. Yes. Now, Sam Ryder. Uh, I know that in America, as of late the last couple of years, uh, especially before COVID, Eurovision has been coming to America, mm -hmm. which is a European song contest, which really had its right. roots in the formation of the European Union. I have so several it, friends who've won that. And a matter of fact, that's how um, I've interviewed them several times on PBS. But mm -hmm. uh, the three young guys, the Italian singers, Il Volo, 
Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. They were competing sort of separately, and then they got discovered by a producer at the Eurovision contest, and they put them together and created Il Volo as a result of that. Mm. No, it's uh, there is so much talent in the Eurovision contest, and it it's known for its campness. It's known for its eccentricities of including everyone. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, your color, your sexuality, nothing. When you're an artist and you're connecting with people through music, that's what it's about. It's not about anything like that. It's about enjoying, expressing, and accepting individuality in a safe right. space. And that's what we do through music. So <laughs> there were a few years ago, uh, Will, Will Ferrell, you know him from Saturday Night Live, sure, and he's had yeah. really funny films. He made uh, Eurovision, uh, the the story of Fire Saga, or, or something like that, and it was about uh, him <laughs> being an Icelandic uh, contestant with Rachel Adams from The Notebook and several other things. And oh, she yeah. Plays, yeah, and they really took the biscuit on that. Well, it was a parody, made fun of it, but they actually captured what it's about and the parties and people being who they are with no judgment and what they also did for the eurovision uh film they brought in some of the winners like conchita verst um who lovely woman great voice but she has a beard and and all of that and she was going transition all of that uh, again acceptance there i know some people might not agree or understand that but her talent is is amazing and phenomenal and people can't sing like that, but she can. She won. Um, we had, I think it was Netta, or yes, she sang um, Stupid Boy. She was from Israel, and that's when it went to Israel. So wherever the winner is from, that's where the next Eurovision contest is. So hopefully everything in Ukraine will subside because Ukraine won Eurovision this year. Mm -hmm. And if we can go ahead and make sure that Ukraine is again safe, we will show unity through music in Ukraine. Absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely so, right. I'm sorry. So that man, Sam Ryder, he was in the UK. We, we get zero points. We get no point. It's always done in English and French and, and all of that. So they'll say, oh, the UK gets deux points, you know, two points on the end. Of course, you'll have none other than our fantastic commentator who you mentioned earlier, uh, sitting there making fun of it and oh well we probably won't get any points this year and all of that well this year we won all the votes but mm. because of of the ukraine and the public vote that was added ukraine took it from us this is the greatest performance and placement that we've had in literally i think 20 years jim so sam Ryder was invited he's now a national hero for winning euro well he didn't win but coming in second for eurovision in our eyes we might have won <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Sam Ryder there. That's cool. We have a uh, couple more videos here. Let's uh, let's show this one here, and then we'll surprise everybody, and we'll chat about when we come back. Gang, if you're watching uh, and enjoying, let us know. Leave a comment on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. That is uh, the channel you're watching right now. Gym Masters TV. Hit that red button. Don't forget to click the notification bell, too. So that way there you will always be kept abreast of all of the incredible episodes. And give this episode a like as well. The little thumbs up icon you see there. We would love that. That helps get the word out and uh, spread the levity of the Gym Master Show Live around the world even more. Here's some more from the actual Queen Elizabeth Platinum Jubilee celebrations. And then we'll be back with our special guests uh, joining us here, We're sort of tag teaming. I'm on one side of the big pond in the United States. He's on the other side in London, England, Jim Masters and Thomas Mace Archer. Yes, we are here and here is the video. <laughs>
really cool, <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. And see, the, the staging was very different for this Jubilee. Now, 10 years ago, Jim, we had a center stage in front of Queen Victoria. Mm. And it had awnings and all that. And it left the wings of the palace able to be illuminated. Well, this year, they put staging on both sides of the palace, on the wings, but back. And they put a little stage in front of Queen Victoria. So this was actually really made for broadcast, not for people to watch it. And I think that's also what angered some people, because where you've erected the wing staging, it blocked all of the beautiful projections and things. So as we're seeing these pictures, you can actually see the tops of, of the staging where the lights are, and it actually obstructs the view. So there was a lot of talk about that today uh, in the papers and on the shows about it, saying that it actually wasn't viewer friendly, which mm. um, yeah. you tend to overlook things like that when you have such a fantastic party. But when you have people that want to nitpick and say, you know what, you went through all of that effort and you blocked it. You stopped people from seeing it because you have now three stages and a runway. And it was really kind of funny. I'm going to be a bit cheeky here, Jim. Just you, me, and the Lovatees. When Brian May, right, Queen opened it with Adam Lambert. Fantastic voice. Look at me. I'm getting all secretive. Like, yeah, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> so it, Adam Lambert came out. Turn up your volume, right? everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, no, not too mouth. <laughs> so Adam Lambert comes out, all that. And then all of a sudden, Brian May, and if you'll remember from the first Jubilee in 2012, uh, no, sorry, 2002, he was on the yeah. roof of Buckingham Palace, God Save the Queen, something similar uh, for 2012. But now he came up from that center stage and he actually came up in between the legs of Queen Victoria, jamming away on his <laughs> guitar. So if, if you look at these pictures of Brian May on the screen and you zoom in, you can see him and there he is in between <laughs> Victoria's legs jamming out on, on the guitar. And we all just sort of gasped and did a little bit of a pearl clutch saying, one is not amused. I don't think Her Majesty Queen Victoria would enjoy some stranger with long hair <laughs> in between her legs. On it's, a, just the way the visual, <laughs> it's just the way the visual actually happened, huh? The way exactly. That, mm -hmm. So sometimes, so you're oh. saying that it was really set for broadcast versus yes. sometimes, and sometimes, yeah, when you go to events, sometimes they are suited for the cameras and for the mm -hmm. networks and the, the live coverage. And uh, you're not necessarily going to see it all while you're there at the ground exactly. level. But it looks like, you know, you were able to see quite a bit, huh? You, oh, we were you saw. maneuvering around a lot? You had to No, no. Um, I, in true British fashion, I claimed my, my spot and I wasn't leaving. <laughs> so, but I had a, a rather large uh, picnic blanket. So I had my friends and us, and we actually had a dance floor and enough space to move around. But the thing is, Jim, they created from the backstage to the back of the Victoria Memorial that you can't see, which connected to the front stage in front of Queen Victoria. Naomi Campbell made a special appearance, and she did a little fashion show runway walk, which they didn't even show to us on the mall. We had no idea she was there. Uh, so all of these little things... And this is why I was saying that people were a bit angry because of these wing stages, because in 2012, in, 20, in 2002, when I was in the garden, we could see everything. Everything mm -hmm. was made to truly involve those who were invited. We had our picnic hampers. We were treated to fantastic uh, luncheon at the palace. Uh, and, and it was so bad in 2002. The Golden Jubilee was so fantastic, but whoever remembers S Club 7, they announced that night at that concert for Her Majesty that they were breaking up. We were devastated. We're like, this is a happy occasion. You're breaking yeah. up. Yeah. No. <laughs> so I love my music. Now, so, was this scaled yeah. down a little bit because of the pandemic, you think, at all? No. No, there was a bit of controversy this week because it actually came out that palace officials, and you know I've always said that I will defend Megan with these gray suits, Jim, that she spoke of, because I know how they operate. They actually came out and said to the producers of the pageant, don't over-egg the pudding. Don't celebrate the queen as, as you would, because we don't want to upset the Republican minority. Well, this is a constitutional monarchy. 
this is a country that has a queen, a crowned head of state, and people want to celebrate their monarchy. It's the most famous, famous monarchy in the world. And this woman has just made the most history out of any British monarch, a thousand years to get here. And you want to tell the producers, don't overegg the pudding because some minority Republicans will feel offended? Well, I'm offended that the majority wasn't treated to what they should have been because a few gray suits at the palace are afraid of their own shadows and don't want to seem to be offending the minority of Republicans that say horrible things about the Queen, calling her all sorts of names. We have seen some very horrible things uh, said about her this week from that very vocal but small minority. Uh, that is the Queen's bank, Coots and Company. That's where the Queen and members of the royal family have their bank accounts. They've actually provided a cash dispensing machine in the, in the basements, in the cellars of the royal, the royal residences. So this is their main branch in London on Strand, and this was their uh, tribute to Her Majesty, celebrating wow. a lifetime of service. And of course, they have the royal warrant, and there she is from 1952, that, that silhouette side profile, which is iconic around the world. That's how the Queen's Bank celebrated her Platinum Jubilee. Really cool, really special, huh? Yes, so special. Everyone has their bunting, they've gone out of their way to dress their windows, Jim, to decorate. Uh, I mean, you can't walk down Piccadilly or Strand and not see a window that hasn't been decorated to the hilt with yeah. Jubilee uh, paraphernalia. And I'll tell you, I was uh, in the silver vaults uh, of London at Chancery Lane just last week because I, I was going to some formal events. I needed to get some of my jewelry and all of that. Even down in the vaults, it was a treasure trove of silver, of mm -hmm. 1952 and 53 in pictures and i've never seen so much silver dedicated mm. to her majesty in my life <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh that's a lovely memento too bad yes. there's cameras everywhere <laughs> <laughs> not that i would ever steal it of course I i'm not that sort of person but you just would love to have these trinkets in your collection but you know for two hundred and twenty thousand pounds for some of these things i was looking at you know i do have champagne taste but unfortunately i have a prosecco budget funny <laughs> 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 so it was really something uh, quite historic and epic oh. and again for those watching it uh, has never happened before the 70 right never never ever jim the the closest we've ever had was the Queen's great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, at 63 years. She had, a, um, she had a diamond jubilee. And people have been really concerned about the immobility of Her Majesty and, and dropping out of events. And uh, I was quoted in iNews this week saying that this is actually a way that she is showcasing and somewhat conditioning us for the next generation, showing us what our royal family is going to be without her. Yeah. And that's, that's, again, a real realist royalist, Jim. And these are the sad facts that we're seeing. So when, when we think that she had a blue sapphire jubilee, which was 65 years, and then we're now at the platinum jubilee, and God willing, she keeps chugging and keeps you know, those botanicals into her system with that gin every day, we'll have 75, and we'll see what happens then. So uh, we are now in uncharted, unprecedented history with Her Majesty the Queen, and I think it will be quite something to beat Louis the Fourteenth of France. We're we're really rooting for her, Jim. We're we love working. the Prince of Wales, but yeah. we love her, and it's going to be a sad, sad day when we no longer have her with us. That would be uh, absolutely, yeah, I concur. We've got another uh, video here that we want to share as well, more from... Uh, the coverage of the actual Queen Elizabeth Platinum Jubilee. Here's another video to enjoy, a short one, gang, and then we'll be back with our coverage. If I was a sculptor, then again, no, or a man who makes potions in a, a traveling show. No, it's not much, but it's the big. I can do my gift in my song, and this one's for you. 
you can tell everybody this is your song. It made it quite simple, but now that it's done, I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind that I put you down. <laughs> that was really nice. That was to have Sir Elton John there and and that song as well. And then the way mm -hmm. they had the images reflecting on Buckingham Palace. That, uh, that was uh, singing one of his own songs too. Which is and that's the thing. People want it. You could hear the people singing. That's what they expected. Now, it was so special because that he he's always done something special for her majesty and he said you know what this is your song your majesty this is for you and he said i'm i'm not able to be here at buckingham palace but i thought you would enjoy me coming from one of your favorite rooms the red drawing room at windsor castle so and he knows that's her favorite room so to be singing to her this is your song in celebration of your, your jubilee, your 70 years of undoubted duty and service to the people of the world. Uh, it, it was touching. It pulled at those heartstrings. And you could hear everybody, Jim. You could hear people singing at the top of their lungs. And that's what people wanted. It's yeah. singing their own songs, the songs they know and they love with those British icons that are still able to sing the way they want to sing and what yeah. they want to sing. Yeah. And uh, I, I've noticed some of the, the comments coming up in the chat. And I, I really wish, Jim, that every single lovety that watched yesterday is watching today. I wish we all could have been on that mall because this was something for everyone. It didn't matter which country you came from. The, the queen right. is the something. world's queen, Jim. Something for everybody, right. You can hold that picture of her in any country. They might not know her name, but they know the queen. And that's mm. the truth. That's the power of her majesty in unification, in influence. And when we look, case in point, in America in the 1960s with Jim Crow and the racism, and we look at, as we said, with, with South Africa, her majesty was dancing with presidents from Africa, the president of Ghana. She wasn't afraid of people of color. She actually broke through and transcended any sort of race. She said, we're all people. And in my commonwealth that I have helped build 54 nations, we won't tolerate anything like that. She did what most people wouldn't have done if they were a head of state, Jim, because That's it right. would have been seen as maybe political and unpopular. But right. she rests above politics and she can unite people and color has never been an issue for her. So... There's magic in that old lady yet, and we love her. And I say old lady dearingly, yeah. endearingly, because she's a world's grand. We love her. We take her to our hearts, Jim. And I just wish that everybody was able to join us. I had friends come from America. We've had a lot of American members come as well. But two of my dear friends uh, that have come from middle America, uh, they, they have said, how interesting it is to be here and to see that unifying aspect because America is so polarized and everything is about politics that it's very foreign to them to really see everybody coming under one figurehead from everywhere and just showing their love and support for her for her and what she means. So to, to have my friends care enough to support me to come here during this jubilee and see what it is that I've been doing in my career for the last 12, 13, almost 15 years, uh, really says a lot to me because they're paying attention now to everything I've said all these years because it's, it's coming true. It is, Jim. Which is amazing, right? Because they've seen it from early on and then, uh, you know, they're there to see it come to fruition, which is absolutely uh, fantastic, really. Um, this was amazing. This was really something. Um, and I love the fact that, uh, you know, we put this, these two days of specialized programming and broadcast together here. Uh, it's what I tell our viewers new and those who've been watching for a long time, that what we do at the gym master show live is something different. We do it like an entertainment lifestyle variety 
talk show series, like the old school talk shows yes. where they had all kinds of different guests and topics and all kinds of different things about life and celebrations. Sometimes they were on location. Sometimes they were in the studio with guests from all walks of life, levels of celebrity and the variety, you know, being the spice of life. And that's what we do here. And I think the last two days, um, of uh, this coverage uh, here exclusively in the way that we've done it on the show was terrific. And I really appreciate you uh, hopping on board as our JMS correspondent and, and joining us and celebrating Queen Elizabeth and bringing us the uh, exemplary coverage yesterday, right there, the coverage in the thick of all the action, <laughs> doing your thing. <laughs> Can you hear me? I hear you, Jim. We're good. You hear me? Doing, we're, doing we're my thing. Do it. do it. That's right. Jim, Jim, are you there? Am I coming in clear? <laughs> That's it. You clear. We got you. You three, two, one, go. And but it worked out because it was a really good episode. And then and then I chatted with the viewers after. And um, and then today with this fantastic sort of post jubilee wrap up with the video and the photos and the commentary and the observations mm -hmm. um, within like an hour or so of the actual wrap up of the, of the event. And to pull this together in the way that we have, I think, was absolutely epic. So yeah. this was uh, really, really fantastic. And I really appreciate you uh, you hopping on. And we'll do more stuff like this uh, again, my friend, of course, you know. And uh, Anytime I can be here, Jim, with the Loverties, it, they are so uplifting. And I, I've been watching the chat and the love that they actually send. And I've watched some of the episodes and I've continued to look at the comments because I'm curious great, as to yeah. people, what they say. And About the show and how yeah, we created this they vibe. Yeah. Just appreciate that. And Her Majesty, for the last couple of days, the tributes have been coming in. And the President and First Lady, uh, the Bidens, had sent a lovely message. Uh, Michelle Obama sent a lovely message. Michael Buble sent a fantastic message. And then today, at the end of all the celebrations, Her Majesty came out on the balcony with members of the royal family and waved. And at that moment, the palace issued a statement that Her Majesty thanks each and every one of you for your support to, to come to see her and enjoy these festivities in honor of her reign. And she thanked the people, Jim. We're thanking her for 70 years of, yes. of dedicated service and duty. And here this woman is, and this is a testament to just the way she is, just being so humble and filled with love, levity, and light that she's thanking us for yeah. letting us let her be our queen. What Amazing. does that say? <laughs> That's, I tell you, it's something really special. I wanted to do something special for the uh, Platinum Jubilee. And when I was thinking about how to build these episodes and, and structure them and create them, you know, how would we do it? How, what's a good way to really sort of uh, get you know, that on location feel. So that's why when I connected with you and said, Hey, Thomas, we're, we're going to build uh, like a two day episode series uh, celebrating Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee in the best way that we can and uh, sort of put it all, it all came together real quick. I mean, we put it this is. together very quickly. <laughs> this wasn't planned like three weeks ago. It came together no, no. real quick. And I said, why don't I call my friend Thomas? Uh, and cause he's there. He's in the thick of the action, and maybe he can hop on as our JMS correspondent yeah. and give us some of the play-by-play. Uh, -play. So this was really fantastic. And again, I'm, I'm glad I created these episodes because people have been commenting and enjoying them. But I also am very happy that you were able to sort of uh, be, you know, the cohort here with me. <laughs> Uh, which I thought was fantastic. And we'll we'll do it yeah. again, you know, as we celebrate more of life and love yes. it. <laughs> yes, that's right. And, you know, Jim, it, it was when that call came through, you know, because uh, unfortunately I've had to turn down uh, some, some people that I've worked with in the past from the continent and saying, can you please, can you please? And I said, there's just no way. But when that came up, international call, Jim Masters, I said, we're answering that because if there's anything I can do for Jim, in those loverties, we will do it. And I will go any way, any length to make sure that we were able to celebrate together. So Jim, thank you for letting me come onto the screen for all the loverties, no matter where they are. And I hope that they've enjoyed this coverage as much as I've yes. enjoyed sharing it with them. So thank you for this opportunity.
The pleasure is all mine, my friend. You now go get some rest. You have some tea, right? I've got some tea here in our Kindness Matters. I mom. do have my 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 tea. Peacocks. Royal okay. Peacocks here. And we'll do a little toast. Cheers, there my we friend. Are. Cheers. Kindness matters, and it certainly does. It does, Jim. It does. Yeah. And we get it every show from the Lovatees. So mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry we haven't been able to speak directly to them, but I've seen what you've put out there. And to every single one of you, thank you for my, so much for making me feel so very welcome. Oh, the pleasure is all mm -hmm. mine. We we really enjoy it. And uh, it's really fantastic having you here. And uh, I just can't believe we've done 700 episodes of the Jim Master Show live. It's <laughs> JMS <laughs> Jubilee. Uh, the JMS <laughs> Jubilee coming soon. To I'll bring the Prosecco. <laughs> <laughs> You have a Costco around, right? Yeah. <laughs> Better get it quick with the shortages they're talking about of everything, right? Better get it quick. Uh, yeah, there's no up. shortage in my, in my house. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and again, I mentioned to the audience who might be tuning in, I have uh, British in me because Masters comes from Yorkshire. The Masters family, they hail from Yorkshire. And then uh, the ones that came over to the States, they settled in Manhattan and they owned jewelry stores in Manhattan. Mm. And then they spread out from there. And my mother's father's side also uh, of English heritage and then Irish on my father's mother's side and then Swedish and French on my mother's side as well with the English. So English on both sides and- uh, Very continental, Jim. Very yeah, I was gonna say, very Northern European mm -hmm. there, but you no, know, you do your DNA, then you find a lot of other things. Oh yes, international uh, selects. <laughs> we are all one, you know, we are all one. And, yes. Uh, kindness yeah. spread around the world is so important. On, on a quick note, Leslie Garrett, CBE, She's from Yorkshire. She's a northern lass there, Jim. That's you might right. be related to National Treasure Leslie Garrett CBE. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when you come the over. Irish are celebrating. Thank you, Jim and Thomas. I wish I could be here. My ancestry from uh, Lincolnshire. Linked. Oh, from Linked. Mm -hmm. um, That's what we put for the on the we abbreviate the counties here. Links, hearts, Lynx. all of that. So and then uh, it's just links. And then the postcode. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thomas, my friend, thanks for joining us uh, for the two days of uh, coverage from Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. This Thank was you. epic. Continue to spread the word to everybody you know about the Gym Master Show Live series. We would love that. And uh, everybody uh, check us out and enjoy some of the episodes, subscribe to the channel, all that fun stuff. Oh, this yes. was really a, a blessing and a lot of fun. And uh, we'll stay in touch, my friend, okay? We will, Jim. Thank you so much. And goodbye, lev levities. Love and light. That's love Happy and light. Happy Jubilee. Levity and absolutely. And you're going to go to bed now? <laughs> uh, I think a nice uh, glass of Prosecco to celebrate at Back home. To the then, I go to bed. <laughs> then he's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Boom. Live from London, England, Thomas Mace Archer Mills. Thank you very much for joining us on the Gym Master Show Live. You enjoy your weekend and uh, good job, my friend. Thank you, Jim. You as well, as always. Bye. Cheers. Bye. All right. Great coverage here on the Gym Master Show Live. Yeah, I was thinking about, you know, for the longest time, putting the shows together, something special. Like I say, we do something different. We do something special with the Gym Master Show Live all the time. If you look back at some of the episodes, something different, something for everybody. Guests come from literally all walks of life. And when I designed and was producing this show, I said, gee, you know, what can we do that's uh, topical and talk about some uh, things that are happening in the, around the world that are positive? There's enough negativity out there that we could easily be talking about. And there's a lot of people online and everywhere else talking about all the negative stuff, we wanted to sprinkle in some positive. So why don't we uh, sort of create a, a two-day sort of series of episodes celebrating the Platinum Jubilee that was uh, being talked about around the world. So we put I put this whole thing together fast for all of you. And then I uh, contacted my buddy Thomas. I said, hey, do you want to hop on the show and tell us uh, some of the uh, on-location action that's happening? He said, sure, like he said. You know, uh, I absolutely want to be on this show because he loves the show. He watches the show. He's been a guest on the show and he's uh, one of our uh, supporters of the show in terms of telling everybody about it. So it was fantastic to have him here. And again, uh, everything we did, we really, I put this together very quickly. I mean, Friday, I actually said, okay, let's do something on Saturday because yesterday we had a night 
episode two with Deborah Danielson, our special guest. So I said, why don't I do something Saturday while the Jubilee is still happening? And then we'll do sort of like a post-show wrap-up uh, as best as we can, put it together quick with all the videos and the photos and everything else, and uh, present it in a style that is conversational, warm, funny, and all the rest. That's how I like to do uh, the Gym Master Show live for all of you, something special and different. So when you watch, uh, it's a treat and it's uh, unique and it's a lot of fun. So there you go. There is our exclusive Queen Elizabeth Platinum Jubilee celebration, uh, two days of episodes for all of you. I hope you enjoyed what we've done here for you. I hope you enjoy uh, the effort, the time and the intention, uh, the conversation, all of the production and just enjoyed yourself. And we took you overseas and it was really, really cool. So uh, we thank Thomas and we thank all of you for joining us. It's been a terrific day. Now it is absolutely stunningly beautiful. So we're going outside. I was on a television shoot early this morning today. It, now it's Sunday, the time of the show live right now. And I've been in studios like all day long. <laughs> I was in the television studio interviewing a guest who came in from Denver, Colorado. And uh, so I've been up since like 6 a.m. going at it strong. And then we came here to make sure we did part two of our Platinum Jubilee celebration coverage episodes for all of you. And uh, now we're going to enjoy the rest of our day. It's absolutely it's 70 degrees. It's sunny. There's no humidity. And we're going to the coast. Uh, we're, at, we're on the coast, actually, but we're going to get the bikes out and cycle. And we've got, you know, family and friends we're going to spend some time with that are here. And uh, that's what it's all about. It's the simple things in life, even with all this grandeur that we just talked about and we celebrated today with the Platinum Jubilee, it still is those simple things in life. Love, kindness, empathy, have a couple of laughs, have a little Prosecco, have a little you know, sourdough bread or whatever, you know, it's the simple things in life. It's the journey. Life is precious. Life is short. Uh, a lot of people get uptight quickly. A lot of people are competitive with one another. A lot of people are negative. And, you know, that's not how I want to do our show. Uh, I like guests that are positive. I like viewers that are positive, viewers that are supportive of what we're doing, guests that believe in what we're doing. Uh, I believe in what we're doing and our folks here, the team. So it's really important to, you know, try to be as positive uh, as, as possible. We're not talking Pollyanna. We're just talking positive as much as we can, as we broadcast to you here from the United States uh, in the New York area, along the Southern New England coast between New York and Boston. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. This was really terrific gang and something different, something unique, something special, which Day one, when I started this series over 700 episodes ago, two years ago, I said, it's going to be something different, something special right here on the Gym Masters Show Live series. We hope you enjoyed part two of Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee Celebration coverage on the Gym Masters Show Live, a JMS exclusive live from London and live from the United States with myself and our JMS correspondent, Thomas Mace Archer Mills, founder of the British Monarchist Society as well. And he was our correspondent for the two days of coverage, which we thoroughly enjoyed. And it was really, really cool. So just some of the photos there. And if you missed anything, you can see it all right here on our YouTube channel. You can watch this whole episode again and enjoy it. Enjoy it maybe with a little Prosecco or some uh, British tea. Gang, you're the best. We're going to scoot out. It was really a pleasure to have you here. Uh, wherever you're watching around the world, I hope you have a fabulous day. Uh, if you're watching live, of course, we'll be back tomorrow with another fantastic episode. If you are watching this Memorex, basically in the archives recorded, uh, we appreciate that as well. I, I want to acknowledge also the folks who watch these episodes of the Gym Master Show live later. Uh, I know we talk a lot about live, but there's many of you, thousands of you who watch all of our episodes after they were on live, you watch them in the archives, you comment, you send us notes, Instagram messages, tweets, uh, Facebook messages, you comment on the YouTube channel telling us how much you enjoy what we're doing here. And I want to thank you as well. Those who watch live and are part of the Lovity Squad and those who are part of the Lovity Squad watching 
quietly later on. So if you're watching this, you know, two hours from now, three days from now, two years from now, thank you very much for being here with us. We really appreciate it. And we hope you spread the word. We hope whatever we're doing here, you're getting something of uh, entertainment value, uh, something inspiring uh, from what we're doing on the show, like a talk show, like a traditional legendary talk show, a television talk show with a modern vibe, modern twist. If you enjoyed it, give us a nice like. There's a thumbs up icon there. Give it a thumbs up. Enjoy. Leave a comment on the YouTube channel. We really appreciate that. Subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Hit that red, that famous red button you see and click the notification bell. Really important, gang. Click the notification bell so that way there you are notified about all our episodes like this. Uh, the special episodes that we've had this weekend celebrating the Platinum Jubilee, which is sort of like a once in a lifetime event. Cool stuff, gang. We're going to scoot out. It's a beautiful day here. We want to be a part of it. God bless you as well. Absolutely. Uh, we will be here tomorrow. So check us out tomorrow. And uh, thank you much, Juanita in South Africa. Good to see you as well, Juanita. And my pleasure. I'm glad you guys enjoyed the series and uh, enjoy our entire series. Thank you, Kathleen in New York City. We appreciate you as well. Yes, uh, Thomas is going to go to bed and we're going to go outside and we're going to get uh, some sun and enjoy uh, the family and friends as well. Thank you, Maureen, for watching. And again, hope you guys enjoyed what uh, we put together here for all of you. Uh, the Queen Elizabeth Platinum Jubilee coverage. I think it was fantastic. Christine Clifton is here. She goes, uh, Jim, thanks for this delightful conversation with Thomas. It's been a spectacular coverage. Hopefully the Jubilee celebration in London for the Queen can help us all become more united. Love it. -y. Heart, heart, heart. Absolutely. I agree. 110%. Yes, absolutely. Uh, nice to see you, Christine, as well. Nikki says, amen. Always to positivity and love it. Yes, you guys are the best. Thanks for these great comments as well. And uh, you deserve time off. I appreciate that. We're actually headed to Florida this week, Fort Lauderdale, uh, for a television shoot project, a big project. I'm headed there uh, this week. We're going to be there throughout the week, but we have episodes for you coming up. I'll be coming to you from Florida and we have some special episodes with amazing guests all week long. So uh, enjoy all of our shows. Um, but uh, we're heading to, down to the Sunshine State, Florida, because we have um, a major television project that I'm hosting and uh, executive producing. Very excited about it. So we'll be in uh, the Fort Lauderdale, Miami area positivity. That's what it's all about. You are so right. Positivity. Timothy Larson. Thank you very much, Timothy. Thanks, Jim, for all you do. We appreciate you. I appreciate your words. Very kind of you, Timothy. And uh, thanks for being with us here on the Jim Masters Show Live. Really cool to see you here, Timothy. And thanks for your, your kind words, your kind words. Merlin in Canada and Ontario says, Jim, thanks for the show. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just got a cheers from Canada. Thank you very much. Nikki says, you're so good at putting it together, Jim. Thank you very much. And thumbs up and a smile there and a care. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, Nikki. Jane in Sweden, hearts and claps from Jane there in Sweden. We thank Jane for her words as well and, and everybody. Pam is here. Pam says, thanks for a wonderful show today. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate that. And, uh, Good stuff. Irish 43s in the house. Uh, everybody, this is really cool stuff. And uh, so nice to see you guys in the afternoon as well. And um, yeah, we enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun. Look at all these comments here. So many comments. When you see me looking off this way, it's usually looking at, you know, the comments as best as I can. Sometimes they, um, you know, fly by. Sometimes they fly by. So when I go to Florida, uh, it's going to be a total work trip. Uh, it's total work because we're going to be busy all day filming at multiple locations in Florida, South Florida, and uh, for the television project. So looking forward to that. But we're going to be here on the air as well with episodes of the Gym Master Show Live for uh, all of you. Gang, all right, take care. Thanks for being with us and watching this episode of the Gym Master Show live series. We appreciate all of you being here. And um, good stuff. 
Jane says, thank you so much for being here uh, yesterday and tonight, Thomas. Super. Now you need some sleep, I think. Thanks, Jim, for this fantastic show and hearts and uh, champagne bottles and cheers and more hearts. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Nikki, thank you for your kind words as well. All right. You guys are the best. We'll see you soon. We don't say goodbye here. We say slancha, cheers, hasta la vista, avida zain, moi loop, shalom, sayonara, <laughs> ciao. We'll catch you on the next episode of the Gym Master Show Live. We'll be back tomorrow uh, for all of you with another fabulous guest. And um, just enjoy. Just enjoy life. Don't take it too seriously. Uh, try to laugh as much as possible and then try to be good to one another. And be good to yourself. Very important to be good to yourself as well. Takes a village, you know, takes a village. All right, gang. Thanks for being with us. This was a fun episode. If you missed uh, yesterday's, check it out as well. And any of the episodes, they're all here for you. Almost 700 episodes archived for your viewing pleasure. This is your host, Jim Masters. Thanking you for your time this time till next time. We'll catch you on the next episode of the Jim Masters Show Live. Spread the word, everybody. Tell everybody about our series. That means the world to us. Uh, leave a comment on our YouTube channel and uh, continue to enjoy what we are doing here. What we are doing here is fantastic. Jim, you and I have the Tiger's Eye bracelets on. Yeah, we got lots of them here. Look at them all, collecting them. This one was given to me when I was on a TV shoot. This one's kind of cool. Uh, TV shoot recently up in Massachusetts. Cool stuff. Yeah, I love these. Um, they've got healing properties, they say, too. Cool stuff. All right. So with that, we have long goodbyes because we don't say goodbyes. We say, see you later. We're getting out of here. We want to go to the sun and the coast. So we're going to do that now. Take care, gang. Great audience. We love you all, whether you're watching live or you're watching this later. Got amazing people that watch this show and support this show. And we thank every single one of you very, very much. Take care, gang. Thanks for being with us. Hope you enjoyed the show. and. Cheers.